Welcome everyone. I hope you are all doing okay, staying safe and surviving social isolation and lockdown and quarantine. Uh, because what no one tells us, which we're all now finding out, is that social isolation and lockdown and social distancing also creates another issue called social claustrophobia. <laughs> So you're now all locked in with people who you get on great with because you're not locked in with them. You see them in the evenings or weekends or whatever, or you see the kids in the morning, then after school, and now you are all in lockdown together. So the least this will be is a massive social experiment that could go multiple ways. So I wish you well, all of you, with your, with your social isolation stroke social uh, closeness. Uh, in uh, with people that you normally don't have that um hey listen uh i think it's a fine line guys between tragedy and learning for we humans and timing is all to do with getting that fine line right and i think that's why i'm reluctant to jump in to this whole thing too soon and i've said that earlier in an earlier post i did when i chatted to you guys i think there are so many voices out there jumping in and i appreciate um the need for people to have a voice into all this. We all should. But a lot of it becomes white noise and repetition and unhelpful and bombardment and so on. And I don't want to add to that mess. So I've been reluctant to jump in because I think when we are first hit by crisis or tragedy or loss or setback or disappointment and all of those things we're all dealing with, um, it takes a while for us to come up the other side of that to even be open to learning and growing and personal development so i think the timing is essential to getting the to getting the the proximity right on the border between tragedy and crisis and it becoming learning and new life and creativity it's a fine line i may not have got the fine line right guys with you so i apologize if my timing is not perfect with you all in my doing this thing with you but as the days go on perhaps the timing will sit better with you all welcome welcome you keep joining us around the world welcome just keep chipping in guys and welcome on board um many of us as we now know are um money poor but we are time rich and so i just wanted to say to you again thank you so much for your time and attention here today and in the next coming days thank you if you can be with me live for your time and attention, um, thank you. Because I've come to believe at my age and stage of life that time and attention are the most valuable commodities, resources we have as humans. Because I've come to understand that time and attention are, are fossil fuels, they're not renewables. In other words, once you've burned them, they're gone. They're gas, coal and oil. They're not wind and rain and solar. Time and attention are not renewable. And so once you've given it, you've lost it, you never get it back. And so I'm grateful for you giving me on purpose the most valuable thing you have of time and attention. And I think one of the reasons I'm saying that is because now you have all this time and attention available. I think you have to manage it more than ever. I think we have to now take charge of our time and attention more than ever. So I suggest you... Are intentional about that and one of the things I think is good to do when you have nothing but time and attention to give in seasons of life for whatever reasons and this reason is the virus but you know some problem a setback unemployment an accident uh, an illness all these things can put you in a time and attention mode that you don't normally have but it's time to edit I think our social media feed why don't you make a plan this week to go through all your social media and prune and cut out any social media in your feed that is not helpful to you at the moment, including me. If I am not helpful, cut me out, cut my voice out, come back later when my voice perhaps sits better with you. But perhaps a good thing to do because your time and attention is a fossil fuel, are fossil fuels, then don't be wasting it, don't be squandering it on incoming traffic, incoming demands for it. Uh, that later on you kind of regret giving your time and attention to those. So be intentional about editing and pruning and filtering your time and attention uh, demands at the moment, I think is a good thing to do 
especially at this time when we're all kind of locked down and giving time and attention to all kinds of stuff and not being careful. All right, I want to speak to you for a few minutes. Hope you're all okay. Um, about stability versus resilience. I think this is a time for resilience and not stability. Stability is not a bad thing, guys. I don't mean that all the steadying of the shit that we are doing personally and that we are doing corporately in our organizations, there's a degree to which we need to steady the ship. I get that. But if we stay there, um, what happens is that the crisis, the tragedy, the upheaval, the disruption gets the better of us. And so doubling down, battening down the hatches, I get that. And do as much as that as you can. But then once you've done that, weathering the storm is not a good strategy because we don't know how ferocious the storm will be or how long it will last. So you have to move from stability to resilience. Resilience doesn't weather the storm. Resilience uses the storm to grow and to learn and to get better and to improve and to flourish. So resilience is going to give you and give us a better outcome than stability. As appealing as stability is in unstable times, it is not a good long-term strategy. We as a species, as you all know, as a species, we would not still be here if we had majored on stability rather than resilience. We are a resilient species, but I think many of us, and it's a generational thing often, I think, and a cultural thing and a stage of life thing, perhaps, many of us favor stability um, that has been put into us much more by nurture and training and some of our organizations, the church included, by the way, the church has favored stability over resilience for generations. And instead of the church using the storms that we've gone through generationally to reinvent and to renew and to come up better and smarter than we were before the storm hit, we batten down the hatches, we lock everything down and duck our head in the sand, often hoping when we come back, we'll still have you know, some relevance, we'll still have some following, still have some voice. And of course, the voice is decreasing in all organizations that have done that historically. So stability is a poor strategy for long term. And this feels, doesn't it, like a long term situation that we are all in. So I want to encourage you guys to move from stability, from weathering the storm to becoming creative and inventive and adaptability is going to be massive for us right now and flexibility and the ability to shape shift into new shapes of thinking, new shapes of living, new shapes of relating, new ways of doing life. And I think that is all resilient behavior that will hand you um a greater interaction with what's going on. I noticed that Donald Trump the other day used the language of declaring war on the virus. That's a good thing to say as a leader because what it says is that our leadership that use that language are seeing this virus, this pandemic, as something to be attacked and something to be fixed and fixed as soon as possible and throw everything we have at it. That's what you do in wartime. So when leaders move to resilience rather than locking everything down and hoping we'll still be here afterwards, it's a good sign. And I want that to trickle down amongst all of us, that we all have this, we're at war, let's go into a war footing. In other words, let's get resilient, let's find what we can do to beat this thing. How can we grow and flourish in spite of it, almost because of it? Because that's going to come out of this too. And I don't want to at all come across, and that's why I wanted to be careful with my tone in any of this stuff I do, at all to come across patronizing or shallow or unkind or uncaring to any of you and your loved ones and your family and friends that are really taking a big hit with this thing. My heart goes out to you guys, seriously. So please don't feel that I am being... That's why I said the timing between tragedy and learning is a difficult one to get right. So if I've stepped in too early and I'm coming across too, you know, whoopee, which is not my energy at all, as you'll know me, guys, I favor wisdom much more than I favor inspiration. I think, again, in the church world, we have gone much more for inspiration than we have for wisdom. 
And Solomon tells us, it's by wisdom a house is built, not by inspiration. Inspiration is very unreliable as a coach and a mentor. Inspiration is not a foundational structure at all. It is by definition flimsy and fleeting. So we want everything we do and say it to be inspiring, but don't look for inspiration in your day only. Inspiration in your day only um, will give you a little bit of, you know, mini stability, but inspiration is not good for long-term resilience. Wisdom is. Um, uh, let me just say a couple more things, then I'll, I'll let you all go. I'm so aware of uh, you're all uh, in pandemic mode, although we've all got time and attention, but I don't want to take advantage of yours, as I said earlier. Um, I was reading a, a book recently by a guy called Simon Sinek, who is a great writer and thinker, and his book was called The Infinite Game. And uh, one of the things he talked about in there was what happened to Victorinox, the Swiss Army Knife Company. 80% um, of the Swiss Army Knife Company, Victorinox, they're called, 80% of their business was the Swiss Army Knives. As you know, everybody in the world virtually had one. And it was a great gift to give to someone. Um, and so when 9-11 hit, uh, it was the equivalent to them of the coronavirus hitting. When 9-11 hit, um, the whole global attitude to knives changed. And they realized that overnight their 80% business was possibly going to go to zero overnight because people couldn't any longer travel with knives in their luggage the whole attitude to knives, the psychology towards, towards knives changed. So they were in the wrong business at the wrong time after the 9-11 effect on our psychology globally. So what do you do now, like many right now companies that are facing a similar hit that they had for a different reason back then, what do you do? Well, they could have gone for stability, which would have looked like, okay, we've got to double down on selling knives. We've got to find a way to sell more knives. That's what stability does. Stability doubles down on what you had before in the belief that if we do more of it and do it harder and work longer hours, we'll weather the storm. And it's a bad strategy because if they'd have just tried to sell more knives, going against the massive psychological shift against knives, it would be a waste of time trying and they're losing ground all the time. They're wasting it on trying to stable the ship by selling more knives. But instead what they did, they diversified, they diversified, they adapted, they became resilient, reinvented themselves. Victorinox moved away from knives and went into travel goods, fragrances, um, tourism stuff, um, clothing, uh, and their business took off to a whole new level. They didn't lay off any staff at all. They went into massive profit in the following years because during the big hit that they took, as we all are now, they realized we either adapt, reinvent, get smart, get resilience, think outside the box, think differently, approach it another way, find a new niche in the market. We either do that, which is called resilience, or we go under um, saying we're over because... 80% of our business has been hit overnight. And I know a lot of you uh, that uh, follow me are in business. You are CEOs, you are entrepreneurs. And um, this time requires resilience from you, from us, not just stability and lockdown. And I'm just strengthening that to you guys. I know you know that. I know it's tough. And if this is too early, give it a while. But remember this talk. Come up the other side as soon as possible, I think, into some form of resilience rather than stability. Um, Victoria Knox now are doing amazingly well on all the new goods they started selling. And um, I think the Swiss Army Knife is now only 10% of their income. How amazing is that? From 80% to 10%. And the gap in between has been filled by all these new products that they um, resiliently moved to creating and reinventing. So I want you to think about this today. Uh, what, where are you going? What, what is your mindset? Where are you moving in this? Are you moving towards stability and staying there as a long-term solution and strategy? Or are you already moving into, even in small ways, resilience? The need to 
reinvent, rethink, diversify, adapt, even in tiny things. It doesn't need to be some big thing, even in small things that you know um, incrementally those small things will make a big difference in the next month or two. Do that. Resilience. Be smart. Look at your options. Weigh up your options. Look for where there is a niche. Look for where there is a different way, a different idea. Read, think, listen, be open wider to even the group who have previously had your ear. Maybe the ideas that you need next are going to come from a camp that you have historically ruled out of hearing anything valuable from. Um, listen, be open at this time. Even those who you have labeled as enemies will, may have something hugely helpful to you at this time. And resilient people do not get picky and choosy with who they learn from in crisis times. So please widen your circle of inclusion to who you think has a voice into your life at this time, because often the people that we've only listened to are as stuck as we are. <laughs> and so please widen your circle of listening and learning, because somewhere out there, someone has thought something through that you're on the verge of discovering, and they're going to help you move to the next level because they figured it out just ahead of you. So we've got this massive sharing going on to help us all learn and feed from each other's resilience at this time. All right. 